Okay, this is a follow-up from yesterday's video uh, when I was discussing foam heads and displaying your masks and I talked about foam filling uh, for, for a minute and there's some questions regarding foam filling masks and the differences between the foam heads versus the foam fill uh, and whatnot. So I will get into some of this right now and hopefully it will answer some questions. Somebody asked why isn't foam filling uh, dangerous like the styro heads? Um, shouldn't it affect it the same way and cause it to dry out? Um, the answer is no, they are completely different. Um, I'm assuming it's the chemical makeup of whatever polystyrene does to the latex. It, it, the foam filling materials do not. Um, <clears throat> everybody I know in the hobby that's a veteran mask collector have, that has high-end uh, pieces like this, they will not hesitate to foam fill any of them. Um, it's pretty, pretty uh, desired technique. Gravity is one of the biggest problems for a mask. Um, over time, the masks will obviously just melt into a blob if they're sitting on a shelf or in a box. Um, you know, you pull your mask out of an attic 20 years later, it's ruined. So, if they're foamed properly, not only does it help it from ever drooping again, it keeps it completely solid, like frozen in time, but a master foam filler can manipulate the mask while it's being foamed to keep that perfect shape. Um, it's very tough to foam fill a mask properly. I only know one guy that can do it um, as well as these look. How do we know foam filling um, isn't going to ruin the masks over time? Uh, well, foaming is not a new technique by any means. Um, this mask here is the only intact original Vern Langdon zombie from 1972. It's the only original paint, original hair copy. And this mask was foam filled in 1983. And if it wasn't foamed, um, I don't think we would be looking at it today because it would surely be um, withered away to nothing, probably melted. Um, there's a couple other copies out there in the world, um, but one of them severely damaged and uh, it was not foamed. Foaming is pretty hard. Um, I think there's only a handful of people out there that can actually do it. Um, there is one guy who is the best, hands down, and he foamed this zombie in 83 and actually foamed that Frankenstein on the right just a few weeks ago. Um, but I can tell you he is not using that. I would not even attempt to fill your uh, masks with great stuff or any kind of expanding foam because I think if you go back in the morning and check on your mask it's going to look like a basketball <laughs> so I, I wouldn't even mess with this stuff because the foam that appears to be in all of these masks it's slightly pliable um, I've worked with great stuff before and it's it's very firm and dry when it's finished so um, maybe there's people out there that can use it and are successful with it but if you're trying this for your first time, I wouldn't even mess with that stuff. And I personally do not know how to foam fill a mask. It's something I want to learn. Um, I'm going to experiment with it this year. So if I get it down, I will post videos on how I did it. Um, I do know some guys that can foam only inside of a mold. When they uh, pour the mask, they can foam fill it in the mold so it keeps that perfect shape. But they're using a very um, soft foam that's like a squishy type foam. You can squeeze it like a, like a Nerf football so they can pull it out of the mold, but it's still intact, um, but it's much softer than the foams that are being used in these because these masks are nice and firm um, and they're not gonna be pliable at all. Foaming can be very expensive, um, especially if you have a lot of masks and you want to foam them all. These are not all foamed. Um, 
the majority of them are, but you can spend, uh, depending on the mask, upwards of $100 just to foam, foam one piece. So very pricey, very tough to find someone that can do it well, um, especially if, if you have a real rare mask. You just don't want to send it to anybody. Um, it's got to be done right. The next best thing to foaming, of course, most of you know, is plastic grocery bags. You can uh, stuff your mask really good if you didn't know this. I stuff them up in the nose and the chin, make sure the whole mask is nice and solid, uh, full of the bags, and then I stick it on a mask stand. So, poor man's way of doing it, but everybody uses them. This is a 70s Down Post Phantom that I recently got, and when I bought it, it was shriveled up, looked like a prune, just all misshapen, and the foam filling brought it back to life, and it looks like a mask again. I'll actually post a couple pictures of it, of what it used to look like, and you can see now, it doesn't look too bad. Not everything comes out perfect, it's going to depend on uh, the condition that the mask is in. Here's a few more pieces that were foamed a long time ago, and they're in near perfect condition. Nothing's deteriorated and the shape is still brand new. One of you asked about um, displaying a half mask. What's, uh, what's the secret? Well, there isn't one. <laughs> They're a pain in the ass and basically all I would do, um, luckily all my half masks have hoods so I stuff the back of the mask full of plastic or even a stiff paper bag um, put the strap around that, that like it's a head like it's on your head and then stick it over a mask stand but lots of times they're gonna fall forward and plop around but I'll take one apart here and we'll look at it you can see all I do is stuff them as best I can. Um, if the mask has a hood, the hood will hold it all together. Um, and you kind of squish it when it's back on top of the stand. I smash it into place until it just freezes. Um, but lots of times they, they like to fall forward. On this uh, creature mask, the foam is visible on, on parts of it. And you can see what I mean about it being pliable, like it's soft not super soft but you know it's different than the expanding foam it looks to me like when this was foamed with that there could have been a cavity in the middle that was empty and some expanding foam was used possibly in the center of this thing if this will focus right you can see there's two different foams going on here you got the the softer one and then the more dry um, firm one that reminds me of an expanding foam but I'd be very careful with that stuff once again I, I just don't trust it maybe I'm wrong I don't know all of my top stone masks are foam filled and they're um, like a half mask style you know similar to a half mask and you can see that a little stand is made and put in there when the foam is wet and uh, works out pretty well so just just an idea if you start to mess with foam filling they uh, usually will come with some kind of little base stuck up in the foam um, same here on this Medusa they'll usually have a uh, a little cardboard tube coming out of the bottom and it stands up perfect so pretty cool uh, way to display it. Again, uh, what I'm saying about the styrofoam, I'm basing off of actual masks that come into my collection that have been on styrofoam heads for long periods of time. Um, I haven't seen every mask in the world that's been on a foam head. I'm sure there's people that have had great success with them, but the things I see coming into this collection that have been on heads for long periods of time are pretty much ruined. Um, 
and it's it's not just two or three masks it's been a lot more than that um, so it's your call if you want to keep using them but I would at least wrap them up in plastic all right that's it for today or for now <laughs> if you have more questions just uh, leave them in the comments and uh, I'll keep shooting videos thanks again